Hey everybody, welcome to my most recent model build. This time I've chosen to build the Hurricane, which is a vintage rubber powered duration model. First published, can you believe it, 80 years ago by Earl Stahl. He is an American designer, well known, and with that in mind, I'm absolutely confident that this will be a spectacular flyer as well as a beautiful looking classic model. As you can see, I've started with the fuselage construction here. Fuselage is predominantly constructed from 1 8 inch square balsa, uh, as well as some 16th sheet insets. The 8th square was stripped from some nice straight grain hard balsa sheets in order to make the fuselage nice and stiff. In this next image you'll see I started fitting a couple of formers and some stringers, and that starts to give the fuselage a nice bit of shape and more character than the traditional box fuselage. Another view coming up of the fuselage from the rear. That shows the turtle deck area a little bit more clearly. And interesting to note that Earl decided to have a curvature to the top of the nose, uh, but a little more angular shape to the rear section of the fuselage. The underside of the fuselage is constructed similarly to the turtle deck. Two eighth inch square stringers run lengthways on the fuselage, and they're sitting on 1 16th inch formers. This little structure adds considerably to the rigidity of the fuselage and also provides extra strength around a couple of critical areas, namely the undercarriage mounting and the wing seat. In the second angle you can see that the eighth stringers have been shaped. This will become more evident when we get to the covering later on in the build. At this stage the fuselage is pretty much finished and ready for covering. On to the construction of the tail now. And of course I started with the vertical as you can see from this image. It's all constructed from 8th inch sheet balsa as well as a little bit of strip and as you can see a couple of 16th ribs. The ribs are formed over the center spar so they were only fitted once the structure was lifted from the plan. I couldn't resist a quick assembly of the model at this point. Here we see the fuselage with the fin fitted and we start to get an idea of what the lines of the model are going to look like when it's finished. Always a great motivator to keep the build going. Onto the horizontal stabilizer now. Now this is all built flat on the board because the bottom of the stabilizer is indeed flat. The leading edge, trailing edge and main spar are 1 8 inch balsa. Ribs and top spar are made from 16th. Unfortunately Earl only included the center rib on the plan so I had to use a bit of imagination and experience to create the other three profiles. Here the tail has been lifted off the board and shaped. You can see the trailing edge is nice and thin now. And in the next image you'll see how I was able to fare the top spar into the tip, making a nice clean finish ready for covering. If you look closely at this image, you'll see that I've overlapped the top spars and spliced the leading edge. That stops me having a butt joint on center and should certainly improve the strength of the stabilizer. Again it's time to fit the tail to the fuselage and start to get an idea of what the whole assembly looks like together. Interesting to note that the horizontal stabilizer area is enormous compared to the vertical fin, typical of classic design from this era, and perhaps a modern one for this class of aircraft. Here we have a slightly more zoomed in view of the vertical fin and you can see the way I've had to add two additional ribs either side of the base of the fin to make it fit nicely over the top of the stab. Of course I've had to cut it out to fit the profile of the tail as well. On to the wing construction now and of course the first step is to make the parts starting with the ribs. So I've selected some nice lightweight 16th inch balsa for this purpose and cut myself an accurate template. I've also cut some sheet accurately to the length of the ribs so that I can slice them off one by one. Once I've got the full quantity made, I'll stack them up and accurately slot them for the top and bottom wing spars. One nice simple thing about the design of the Hurricane is that the wing cord or the width of the wing is constant throughout its length, so all of the ribs except for two in the tips are exactly the same. Now this example in my hand here is one of the tip ribs. This unfortunately was not on the plan so again I had to rely on a little bit of experience and imagination to make this pair of ribs. 
Making the rest of the parts, of course, is the next step. So here we're making up some wingtips with 1 8 sheet, and I've followed the direction of the curvature of the tip with the grain, using multiple pieces. In the second image, I've cut away the excess material and got a nice clean component. This is pretty much a complete set of parts for the wings. We've got the leading edge, main spars, top and bottom subspars, ribs, tips and trailing edge. The trailing edge is unshaped at this point. I'll do that once the wing is constructed. Talking of constructed, let's get going. So here we've got the trailing edge and the bottom spar pinned down. The tips are also in position and I've started fitting ribs. A couple of steps further in the wing construction. Here we've got the top spar and the leading edge fitted. I've also set the dihedral carefully according to the plan. This is a critical factor in the flight of a free flight model, so I had to take some time to get that right. With the wing inverted here, you can see the under camber of the ribs. That's the curvature on the bottom side of the wing. Common to this type of model, or any high lift, slow flying aircraft. A little while later, and the wing construction's finished. These next couple of images show the details of the finishing. So you'll see the way that I've blended the spars into the wingtips and the way that I've shaped the leading edge and trailing edges. This was done using a razor plane and sanding blocks of assorted different grits, starting from coarse right down to very fine material, probably something in the region of 600 or 800 grit paper. Once again, of course, I couldn't resist a quick assembly. I'm really happy with the way the model is starting to look and excited to get into the covering. I enjoy the covering because it brings life to the model and you start to see the end of the tunnel coming closer and closer and all that hard work culminating in a stunning looking model. Before we get to covering though, there's another critical part to do and a part that I really, really thoroughly enjoy. That's the carving of a balsa prop. So the details of the prop are included in this case on the plan. This is a 12 by 14 inch solid balsa prop. Plenty to absorb the multi-strand rubber motor which will be going into this model. Unfortunately, I didn't have a block thick enough to be able to carve it from solid, so I had to laminate the prop up. And as you can see, I've used four laminations of quarter inch balsa. That of course gives me the one inch thickness which is required for the blank. I also prefer to drill the center hole at this point, I find it easier to ensure that the prop runs absolutely true by doing it using this method. So with the block laminated up with epoxy, it's time to start working on the carving. I use conventional tools to do the carving, predominantly a modeling knife, sanding blocks, and an assortment of loose sandpaper. I like to finish each surface as I go. So here we've got the back surfaces finished, and in the next image, I'm working on the front. It's critical that you get this accurately made so that the prop runs nice and true and is absolutely symmetrical aerodynamically as well. In the next image, you'll see the level of accuracy that I've worked to to end up with a correct profile. The blades are probably something in the region of maybe 3 of an inch thick, maybe 2.5 millimeters or so. Here we've got the blank pretty much finished. All that needs to be done is the actual shaping of the blades themselves. Now this wasn't included in the plan, so I had to use a little bit of imagination to determine the actual outline shape. The prop's just about ready for varnishing, but of course I'll first have to fit the one-way assembly. We'll do that a little bit later in the build. For now though, the prop's being put to one side. So I still had one component to make at this stage before I could get on with the covering. That was the nose block. As you can see, it's made up of a couple of laminations of balsa, and I've used a piece of 1 8 ply for the spinner ring. I had to shape this really carefully so as not to affect the shape of the fuselage itself. But after a bit of careful work, it's really starting to look the part, especially when coupled with that beautiful prop.
With the airframe finally sanded and checked for imperfections, it's time to start with my favorite part, the covering. I'm finishing this model using Japanese Isaki tissue, applied with glue stick and finished with acrylic spray. Sadly, Isaki is no longer available, so I only use it on special models like this example. The succession of images will take you through the process which I used, starting with the bottom of the tail, then the top, and as you can see the vertical fin left and then right. A little bit of forethought in covering the fuselage meant that I started with a strip around the cockpit edge. This strip hid the cuts that I had to make in the top piece when I was forming it around the cockpit area. As you can see in this image, that worked really well. The second piece of tissue that I applied to the fuselage was the turtle deck, or the rear of the fuselage. And here you can see that piece in place. I've pulled it relatively tight to start with, although it's yet to be shrunk. Next came the bottom, and I did it in this order so that the overlap seams and the trimming of the side panels would be easier. Here the fuselage is covered, ready for shrinking and final finishing. Now the nose block was also done in tissue. This time I applied it wet. That made it possible to do the entire block in one piece. It's come out particularly nicely. On to the wing then, and I've started with the bottom. This way I was able to ensure that the covering stuck really well to that under cambered surface. With the wing turned over, if you look carefully, you can see the under camber, although it's tricky even in this angle. The top was covered in multiple pieces. I wanted to have a little bit of decorative color scheme, and this also made it easier to fit into the material I had available. Here we've got the airframe finished, water shrunk, and ready for final finishing. With the covering complete, it was time to start working on some of the finishing and assembly of the model. Now after all the effort that went into carving the propeller, it was a good idea to have a decent undercarriage and pair of wheels to protect it. The plan didn't give too much detail on the wheels, although it did say that they were made of wood, and I've opted to go for the same option. I'm making them up out of four laminations of 16th balsa. This is a technique I've used before, and it works really well. By laminating them with the grain going in opposite directions, the wheels end up very, very light and very, very stiff. I've also included a small piece of brass tubing in the hub to stop the wire from wearing away at the bearing point. This succession of images shows exactly the process that I used to put them together. Tissue covered hubcaps and some painted tires. They fitted onto the undercarriage struts using small axles of 0.6mm piano wire. That's it for the undercarriage, onto the rest of the assembly. With the tissue now sealed with the acrylic spray, final assembly and finishing complete, my hurricane is ready for some flights over long grass. Initially just a bit of trimming, and then slowly but surely I'll increase the winds, adding more and more power to see what it's really capable of. Before that though, a photo shoot of the final product. Really hope you've enjoyed my build as much as I did. Keep safe everybody, and thanks for watching. <laughs>